Okay, shut the front gate. This is a 1968. Little bit of poultry there. Start to walk around, and that's sweet. This 1968 comes from Gundawindi. Well, it does now, and that's where it's going to live. Jamie, the local butcher down there, heard of an auction coming up. Uh, one of his customers had a property at Moree, and there was an auction out at Moree. So this one's come from a property out at Moree. Jamie went out. He said it was a tough battle. He bid hard, and he won this one. And he knows about Mr. Land Cruiser, so he's bought it here for a full roadworthy. And whoa, what a big job that was. Why? Because this vehicle has been inside a shed for 15 years, over 15 years. The gentleman that owns it said at least 15 years. He can't remember. He parked it up. The gentleman that owns it, older gentleman, was it was his second car and he lived in Northern Territory. He drove it down when he bought the property at Moree. He, um, it was his wedding car, his daily drive. He did everything in this. So when it was time to buy a new car, he just kept it. And um, he's very happy that it's gone to Jamie. It's in good hands now. The local butcher is going to leave the patina, keep it just like this. And what a journey for Mr. Land Cruiser. For Mr. Land Cruiser, this to date has been our biggest, our biggest roadworthy because when you park something up for 15 years, boy, things change. And just um, everything that can perish, everything, it, not just going underneath, not just your suspension, could be a, 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 the D bush on the sway bar, everything, every rubber had perished over those 15 years. So we've gone right through this thing and um, got it back on the road. We're leaving the tray. I'll go back to the tray. It's got that dirty old wood on there. That's a job for Jamie. Uh, he may even leave that look. I don't know about that wood, how safe it is, but that's uh, one thing that Mr. Land Cruiser is going to leave. Otherwise, we're going to um, give this uh, a roadworthy and it goes back to Gundawindi. On the outside of this vehicle, very, very original. Um, it's going to upset a few people that the bezel is upside down, but we actually love that. And if I look closely at the paint, that's been upside down for a very long time, Mr. Land Cruiser ain't gonna change it, wear that one proud. The um, old factory bumper and the hooks up the front. Now, in 1968, um, with the indicators, the more modern ones have the Parker and indicator in the same item. Back in, up, in 1969, it was the end of the Parkers in the front bib, so very cool that it's still got that old look. And the bonnet, back in those days, 1968, it was a two-piece bonnet, so it has the split down the middle and the big chrome strip to hide that. And it's also still got its original hooks for those that wanted to fold down the windscreen, shoot a few wild animals and what have you. Mr. Land Cruiser has returned the genuine mirrors on the side, so we've uh, put some genuine ones back on there. They were missing, so um, again going right through this raidworthy we go genuine where we can and on the outside of this one it's basically mirrors and wheels that you see that are different otherwise jamie is keeping this patina this is the look this is why he went to the auction to purchase this vehicle let's go into the bonnet it's changed since it's been at mr land cruiser look at that this isn't the engine that came in here i kid you not i had to do the old um glass of water thing to show you Believe it or not, this thing's actually idling. She's running very smooth and just, yeah, it's only water. So it's not the same engine. When this came in, it normally we can degrease them, not too bad. We had to go and hire a, a hot water, a steam gun to actually clean this one. When we removed the sump on this one, we, um, the pickup was in the sump, just caked in hard oil. It had to be scraped out and cleaned. It was just disgusting. Um, so we've gone right through this engine, right through the cooling, the electrics, uh, replaced stuff with uh, new items like the starter motor, things um, where you do. One thing we did, that distributor is still the Nippon Denso. Instead of purchasing a new one, the guys were really chuffed that they could tear that down and fully rebuild it and put the Nippon Denso, the original one from 68, back in there. So 
they're over the moon about that. Original Cubby Red R, it is just taken back now. Again, it's a different from when it came in here. We just do little things, we, you know, the rocker covers off. We do um, the clearances and what have you, so let's get it painted up. Let's just make it look a little bit tidy under here. The rocker cover then can go back on looking like this, and it just, so when Jamie gets it, it's well presented. This is a different condition vehicle. Um, yeah, the boys have gone through the carby. They've gone through absolutely everything. Again, this is the biggest, biggest roadworthy we've ever um, taken on from weather strips to the new suspension. It's got the train tamer, a two inch lift right throughout it and it sits well. It did have original, um, it had a mix match of splitties versus solids versus hard cap rims versus not. So uh, Jamie has gone sun raisers with a set of maxes. Bloody's come up a treat. Uh, we've done the exhaust system on this, been right through it. Even little things, uh, washer bottle. Wouldn't have had a washer bottle in many, many years, but this one's ready to go. The inside, the inside of this is bloody beautiful. Um, let's look at the shiny new stuff. The seats and the seat belts. Uh, for those that don't know, you're doing a resto at home, you can't get to Mr. Land Cruiser. The lap belts, the seat belts, they're all on Mr. Uh, Land Cruiser's website. Just do -do 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 model, make of the car, and you can get your um, seatbelts for your 40 as well. As a wrecker, we cannot legally sell second-hand ones, so uh, we've made it easy and readily available for new. I've mentioned seats are uh, reupholstered. I've just noticed there is, um, I'm looking up top, we'll start at the roof, it's missing a visor. That must go in there before it leaves for the roadworthy, but right next to the one visor that is there is um, the old school upper wiper motor. I really um, had to think about that then. So a couple years before, um, I think stopped in 1965, there was a motor on each individual arm. And then in came until 1964 come this upper motor that sits um, on the inside. You can see it all happening. And that was standard again until um, 1974. Then they lowered it down. Things like later on came plastic trims. This has still got all your steel trims. Uh, there's no door cards on this vehicle. It's all steel. A lot of guys know this, guys that are just getting into them. Again, 74 was sort of the changeover where we started to come into door cards. And this handle, when the door's shut, it's actually quite difficult. It's in a, in a weird position. So Toyota updated things as it went along. They did update the fuel tank for those that don't know. Same story, that was a lot later in 79, I believe. 79 was the, um, they removed the fuel tank, but this one still got it in the vehicle with the driver. And I did notice while driving this one, we test drive, test drive, test drive. I could smell fuel, it was um, the overflow. That's been fixed. We just go through it, we drive it, we go through it, we drive it. And when this goes home to Jamie, we need it to be perfect. We need him to turn key and not put the first 100 Ks on it. We've put a good three or 400 Ks on this vehicle with its trade plates. Leaving the patina, look at that beautiful dash, the color of the floor, the color of everything. Back then, little thing interesting, the old indicators um, shined on outside the cluster. That also changed. And the old horn in the center. That's a very old steering wheel. It's good to still have that. It's all um, perished and what have you, but it's all very, very original. I'll turn the key off so it don't drain. We've just kept it exactly how the original guy had it, off the farm, maybe a little bit of new upholstery. Okay, it is gonna be tough to say goodbye to this one. Um, we've had it here for quite a few months while we worked on it, did a little bit, put it aside, waited on this to come in from Japan, waited on that. Um, we've all driven it now. Richard, myself, Mick, the older head mechanic, um, we've all driven it. We take them home. Now Mick lives up in the hills, so we've really tested this for its temperatures and we've been driving at 90k an hour. We don't want to push it too hard. Three speed, 90k an hour, bloody hums along. Um, had a bit of a wobble, so after initial drives, we go through, do the caster. It's had a two inch lift, so that's changed the caster. And luckily in 68, at the end of 67, was the start of the newest style um, steering idler box. We have Japanese ones of those on the shelf, so we put that in there, wheel alignment, everything. And now it just purrs along. 85K, 90K an hour. 
uh, it just purrs along. It might slow everyone else down in 110 zone, but it is so much fun. It's been pleasurable for all of us. Jamie, the owner, hasn't actually driven this yet, so we're going to get it um, back to him. He might even drive it all the way to Gundawindi if he can. That's one of his goals is to drive it home. Take it steady, Jamie. Enjoy this rig. It's going to be hard to say goodbye. 1968.